The Dragon Master Magia has reached almost $1,000 per card. What is up, guys? We are back with another edition of the Dragon Master Magia. And this time, we're not opening for it. We are talking about it. So we did this a couple times early on. I'm like, this is a bad idea. Don't buy this card. It's going to get a reprint. It's going to go down. Well, the opposite has happened so far. It's definitely not gone down. So we're going to take a look at what's going on. Dragon Master Magia, quarter century secret rare. You can see that, but the direct by TCG player never believe this because sometimes they can literally be like 40% off. So you always go down to see what the lowest listing is. But okay, so we got Korean. I pulled it. You guys saw that the other day. Go check out the video. I pulled the Korean version. I know I'm pretty insane. Japanese. I've not pulled that one. Maybe I need to pull that one. Uh, Prismatic. Okay, here we go. So Euro, this says Euro. Does that mean they have like a Euro copy? Let's see. It's a picture of the the flag okay well i i don't know if that counts uh but so let's just say the lowest listing is 938 dollars 90 so there's only like nine listings right now there's not many of these this card is now at 900 plus dollars let's check out what's happened with the latest sales so it looks like there was a buyout so if you go back and look uh, about 8 10 so this is a few days ago you know actually 8 9 so there was a 700 dollars sale then at 8 10 there's a 650 then a 690, a 700, a 690, a 695, 700, and look at this. There's no more 600s left. We're up to $900 listings. That's it. If you're one of these people, you're like, please, next buyout, please buy this. This would be insane. This card has gone all the way up to 900 something dollars. So let's, do, let's talk about it. Is this card worth 900 something dollars? You guys already kind of know my opinion, but... It may have changed a little bit. We're gonna go through what I think about this card and how it's going right now. I was actually texting with the one and only Rhyme Style. I thought this would be really cool if he got on here and we did a video, but it was too last minute. So I texted with him and he made a bunch of points about this card and I argued back. We have a little bit of an argument. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna counter some of his points in this video. I'm also gonna agree with some of his points. Let's go and see. Is the Magia worth $1,000? Okay, here's the market for eBay. So we have nine on TCG. We have that is, oh, that's the cheapest one in Canada. We have a PSA nine yeah, for 2,500. Please, please, I beg of you, no matter what you think about this card, don't buy a PSA nine for 2,500, please. Just buy a 10, which there apparently are none, uh, at least on here. So there's a $999, there's a $999, and there's a 1,200 in Germany. And then, so the cheapest one on the market right now is in Canada for $872. So that's five total here. So that's 14 total. One's a PSA 9 at 2,500. So let's just say 13 total. That doesn't even really count. Okay, I just tried to look for the pop report and I can't even find it. So has there not been a lot of these graded? There aren't that many on the market as we're speaking about. So maybe some people are just keeping it raw because it's already like 900 something dollars. Why send it off? You've got a potential thousand dollar card if it you know goes up a little bit more. So maybe people aren't grading this card, which is interesting. So maybe in the future, like a PSA 10 could be worth something. I know there's the nine. I know there's an eight on the market. I haven't actually seen a 10, so I'm assuming there is one, but who knows? And with so few on the market, all it takes is like one or two people to buy a couple of them and the market could shift completely. Like there was like, what, five, $600, $700 sales. Now it's 900 some dollars because those people bought all the lower copies. And unless somebody sells it for less, you can't get it. You'll have to go pull it. And we've seen that is a lot more expensive than $1,000. So when I was talking with Rhyme, I'm saying, look, this card's gonna get a reprint still. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna get a reprint. There's absolutely no way. With all the hype that is behind this, like literally everybody is interested in the Magia. Tons of people have messaged me like, hey, I bought a bunch of boxes because of you. I was open for the Magia to try and get it, you know, thanks to you uh, opening it, not getting it or whatever. So everybody's into this thing because I mean, it's just fun. Like having a card that's like this, rare i mean it's the same rarity as everything else but it's really not the rarity i mean it's a mixture of the rarity and the interest what's happened with all these other qcrs which has been the exact same pull rate by the way i know people don't realize that they see me open a million boxes and they're like wow this must be the rarest card ever it's the same pull rate as every other qcr from the last like year or whatever it's been the only difference is those other QCRs didn't have the entire market interested in one card. And everyone being so invested in the Magia, whether it be the price, whether it be someone trying to pull it like me, themselves trying to pull it, you know, blue eyes collectors actually trying to play the card, which Rom Style seems to think nobody's playing it, which I know it's not a great card, but I know there are people that are frustrated that they can't play it. It's not that many people, but if a few people really want to play it and they actually you know, trade a bunch of cards or buy one of these so they can play it in their blue eyes deck, that still impacts the very few amount of cards that are on the market. So if there's only 
let's say like there's 14 on the market now. Let's say there's one guy that really wants to play in his deck. If he buys one Magia, that makes a difference. There's only 13 on the market now. That's like almost 10% of the market he just bought because he wanted to play it. And I'm sure some of the people that have bought this before at 500, 400 or whatever were players. So just because they there's not a ton of people playing it, doesn't mean that it's not impacting the market in some way. And let's get to our first point that I that Rhyme Style brought up. He basically called this the 2024 10K Dragon, which in some ways I totally agree, in some ways I disagree. So the cool part about 10K Dragon was 10K Dragon had a story behind it. It was the 10,000th card in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. It had the red text, which is exclusive to that card. Sure, there's red text on other cards, but not on that like type of rarity. There's a 10,000 in the text box, and it's basically a Starlight Rare. So it was pretty rare. It wasn't as rare as Starlights or even QCRs because there were only two Starlight Rarities. I know it has its own rarity, and then it was Astro Utopia, which is a different rarity as well. But those two cards were the high rarity pulls. So you'd get one every three or four cases when you open for 10K Dragon versus a current QCR or a old Starlight where there was five of them in the set. It was a 10k search to get on average. So that was a much easier card to pull versus something like the Beijia. But having that exclusive 10,000 in the box, having the red name, having the story behind it, and, and also I have to mention incredible artwork on the 10k dragon. Plus COVID, it was COVID time, everything was hype. So everybody knew about it. There's a, probably a lot more people that know about 10K Dragon than know about Magia, because even though Magia has all the hype right now, there were a lot more people in Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2020 when that thing came out. So they're like, oh yeah, remember that? What was that card that came out in Yu-Gi-Oh? And it was like, it was like a thousand dragon or something. That's probably what they'll say, even though that's an old card, but 10,000 dragons is what they're talking about. I think a lot of people remember that like, whoa, I remember that time when they, they released that exclusive 10,000 card. That was like really insane, you know? So that does have a really cool story behind it that I think will last into the future. The thing about Magia is it is a blue eyes card. So that's a huge W. It also has like the picture of the Magician of Black Chaos. No, Magician of Black Chaos? Is that right? I always get those wrong. The Magician of Black Chaos on the back. So it's a really, really cool combo. Though it's not technically a Magician of Black Chaos in the text box, it's still what that is in the artwork. So the artwork on the Magia, really, really good. So that's a big plus there, just like the 10K Dragon. The thing is, it's just another QCR. It doesn't have its own exclusive like 10,000 in the text box. It has the QCR, which is cool. QCR 25th. It has Dragon Master Magia. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of QCR as the rarity because it's a little bit harder to read. Same thing with the Magia. The text is not the easiest to read compared to other things. 10K Dragon kind of has that problem as well with the red text. It doesn't blend that very well with the brown background. So they're kind of even in that regard. But back to the point of it's just another QCR. It's just not as memorable in terms of like having a story. So there's not really a story behind the Magia. The, the story will be, do you remember that car that was like really crazy? Like everyone was obsessed with it. That'll be the Magia story. It could, it could become as popular as the 10K Dragon from that. I'm not saying it won't. It just needs a lot of traction and it needs for the hype that we've had over the last couple months to keep continuing over the next few months and people not to lose interest, which is always possible when these buyouts happen or these uh, high rarity investments in Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which is basically what's happening with Meiji right now. You need to have interest for long term, like an investment doesn't last for six months, a year, like you got to have this thing five to 10 years to really call it an investment, which I know a lot of people hate that when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but when it comes to this Meiji thing, that's pretty much what's going on. Another argument Ryan made was, which is interesting because later he, he says something else about this, but he said this will never be reprinted in QCR. So Konami told us we're not reprinting QCRs. We will never do that. So take it with a grain of salt because, you know, they've always done like reprints when they weren't supposed to, like we won't short print anymore. And then they said, actually, we won't short print in core sets. So we will, we will short print in the other sets. So to me, that could mean we won't reprint this QCR ever. Except when we make the Starlight Rare, that's not a QCR, so it's it doesn't count, you know? So they've already kind of proved to us that Starlights and QCRs are not the same thing. So like some people are going, duh, they're not the same thing. Yeah, they're different things. They look very, very similar. So they will impact each other. So if a Starlight of Magia comes out, the Dragon Master Magia QCR is gonna crumble because the Magia Starlight, honestly, in my opinion, is gonna look better. It won't have the cool stamp in it, but like the way that the Starlight shined and like the, the name like pops, beautiful in my opinion. So I think the Starlight, it might not, you know, I don't know how to do because it's not the original, but I think it will definitely impact the price quite a bit. And people will divulge, like there'll be two different options for collectors. So if you're somebody that's a collector, an investor, whatever you are in this card, there's now two options for you. There's the same amount of people interested, 
but there's two different options for you to pick from. So no matter what, a few of them are gonna go over here and a few of them are gonna go over here. Therefore, there's less people interested in both and the price can't hold up. That's just how that works. And you might say, they're not gonna do a Starlight. Okay, but what if it's in Bonanza? Yeah, sure, they said in Bonanza, we're not gonna preprint the QCR, but what they did say is they might still have some reprints, but they won't have QCRs. So we could see Meiji in Bonanza as everything but a QCR. And you think that won't impact the price? Think about platinum rares. I know like half of my comments were saying, I prefer platinum over QCR. So when the platinum Meiji comes out, you think they're not gonna pick that up? And as I just said, it divulges the market of Meiji to different ones. So we've got QCR over here. Some people go over here. Platinum right here. Some people go right here. Prismatic ulti. Some people go over here. Prismatic collector. Some people go over here. I think that if it is in Bonanza, it will be the biggest downfall potentially because there'll be six new rarities. A bunch of them will be high rarity. Some of them will be low rarity for all the players. It just won't be able to hold up. And we are talking about in the short term, of course. So if it goes long term, who knows? Maybe people will come back and decide that QCR was the top rarity and that's the one they want to invest in. But you never really know what will happen in a few years. Maybe they'll come back and say, actually, the Prismatic Collector Rare was my favorite. That's what we should go for. Or the Platinum Rare looked better. The market changed their mind on that after a couple of years. We don't really know. I don't think that'll happen. I think QCR will hold because of the stamp and it has like, that was the 25th version. So, you know, you can't reprint that because when it's the 30th version, you can't put 25th on something. It has to be the 30th. So it's a little different. But let's say they don't do Bonanza. Maybe they reprint it in OTS. Whoa, the perfect time to reprint. OTS Ulti. Huh. That would be a pretty cool card. I could definitely see that happening. Or maybe, oh man, the next Battles of Legend Chapter 5 is coming out. Man, this set's gonna suck. This is Konami thinking, by the way. You know what we could put in there? Make it sell? Dragon Master Magia. You know, there's just a million times, a million opportunities. If you're if you're Konami and you're printing a set and it's not that good, they're like, ah, people aren't really interested in this set. Why not announce a Magia reprint? That'll get them interested, because it will. It'll work. And if you're them, why not do it? You've already proved that you will reprint pretty much anything in a different rarity, you know, cause it doesn't count, it's not a QCR, right? Okay, I think we hit that point enough. Let's go to the next one. This was his most interesting, his most interesting argument I thought. He said, nobody plays the card, it's a collector piece. So I was thinking, so nobody plays the card, so it's gonna go up in value. This just one just confused me. I was like, like we went back and forth a little bit on this, but he was like, look, nobody plays the card, which is not true. Some people do play the card. I mean, when he says nobody, he means most people, which is probably true. Now it being a collector piece, I do agree. Like this card, the artwork, the, the lore of it at this point, is gonna be a collector piece. Whether the price goes up or down, I think it will be remembered, whether fondly or not fondly, about what happened with the card. The artwork's great. Blue Eyes is always gonna be collectible, so it's definitely a collector piece. But he argued that QCR Dragon Master Magia is detached from lower rarity reprints. Like, he said if it gets reprinted, it will not affect the QCR at all. We've already kind of talked about this, but I think that even if it's like a common reprint, somebody who went all out to finish their deck and get this Magia is now not in the market. They're now going for the common reprint, or this, it won't be a common in this card. It'll be like a super ultra, something like that, is gonna go for that card and they're gonna sell their other one. They're like, look, 900 bucks? Yeah, please give me $900, I'll buy this $5 version. That's gonna happen. I mean, those people are going to leave the market of Magia. And as people leave the market of Magia, more become available. Sure, it might only be five copies, but in a QCR market where there's only 100 of them total, 200, however many there are out there right now, that's a lot. You know, five going on the market at 700, 600, whatever it is. People might be like, oh no, someone just sold for 700. I bought mine at 900. I better sell it before I lose all my money. So the FOMO that's currently driving some people will become panic. They'll say, oh no, I invested 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 dollars in this card and one sold for 700 and 600? I better get rid of this thing quick before I lose my money. That's just generally how people work. They buy when they see something going up. They're like, oh my goodness, it's so hype. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be insane. And then when they notice, uh-oh, it's hit that peak, it's coming back down. I better sell ASAP because I don't want to be like a big loser when it goes down to $300, $200 or whatever. They, they start thinking about my old video where I said it was gonna be $100. I don't actually think it's gonna be 100 anymore, honestly. This card is, it, it is proven that it has enough traction behind it. It's not gonna be that low. Do I still think it's gonna go down? Yeah, but I don't think it's gonna go down to 100 at this point because there are enough people that are interested in it. But they might go back and think, hmm, Maybe it will go down to 100. I better get rid of it at 700, but while well, I can. So I do think that will impact it. If they're sure, it, 
You could argue, oh yeah, but, but it's only a collector piece. Only collectors are interested. There's no way it's 100% collectors in this market right now. There's a mixture of collectors, people trying to play the card because there's only, I mean, you have to either play a Japanese version, which is not legal in like real tournaments. So you can only do that for fun or you have to get this card. I mean, that's your real options. Then there's people investing in the card. They're buying it and they're like, yeah, it's going to go up. We're going to hype it up on social media. We're going to go in the comments of Ruxin's video and be like, yeah, this card's insane, dude. It's going up to 2000, 10,000, 50,000, whatever. Like they're going to do that. There's people doing that. And then there's FOMO. FOMO is huge. People see it. We just talked about it. They see it going up. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm never going to be able to get the Magia if I don't buy it now. I better buy it now. And then they realize a month later, I shouldn't have spent that much on that card. And then they sell it or they see it going down. Oh, we got to get rid of it. We got to at least make some of our money back. You know, they're like, I spent 900, but 600 is better than zero. I better sell it now. So I think that a lot of that is going to happen is true. But now we get into the big point that we made like a, we didn't really make the bet, but he said I, it was like just a casual bet. I said, you think it's going to be over $1,000? I said, there's no way. And he goes, I bet you it will. So we didn't agree on like a timetable, but Rhyme Style thinks this thing's going over 1000 I think it will get over 1000 at some point. Do I think it's worth 1000 right now is really what I was trying to argue. No, I do not. Could it be 1000 in 10 years? Definitely. I definitely think it could be. I just don't think right now is the time. It's a brand new card. There's still a, there's still some available. You know, I think there is going to be market swings with this thing. You'll be able to get it cheaper. So I don't think it's a thousand. As we just argue with all the four different groups, the uh, collectors, investors, uh, players, and FOMO. Those four people, there's just a lot of variability there. It's not all collectors, in my opinion. And then you have to think about what you're holding. You're holding a $1,000 Yu-Gi-Oh card. $1,000 Yu-Gi-Oh cards are cool. That's until you need to repair your car. You got a, you know, a, a repair at, at your house. You you want to buy something nice. Like, let's say you want to pick up the, like something else. You want to get into one piece and buy some boxes. Or you want to buy yourself like a nice item, like a watch or something like that. You're like, you know what? Maybe I don't need this card anymore. You know, if you're not truly in love with it, you have a thousand dollar item that you could move and have a thousand dollars. I mean, that is not a small amount of money. This isn't a hundred dollars. This isn't ten dollars. This is one thousand dollars maybe or maybe you need to pay off a credit card or maybe uh you, you you lose your job you know uh lord forbid but that does happen people lose their job you're like look i lost my job i'm not keeping a one thousand dollar Yu-Gi-Oh card you know you sell that thing so things happen with collectibles and the first thing to go is a brand new one thousand dollar card in my opinion so that's probably gonna happen at, at some point because it's so new it's not like it has 10 years of nostalgia with somebody where they're like look I, like I'm going through hard times, but I'm going to stick it out for my Magia because I've had it for 10 years. They're going to be like, I'm going through hard times. I've had this card for a month. Let's just get it out of here. And the next branch of that uh, is I kind of talked about when he said this is a thousand dollar card. It's totally worth it. I'm like, you can buy a Summon Skull or a Gate Guardian PSA 10 right now for that much. First edition Metal Raider. He's like, nobody wants those, which is he's not wrong. The the interest in old school cards is definitely down. They're down to 25 percent of what they were in the peak of COVID, though. I would argue if you're like a long term collector, you probably want a Gate Guardian or a Summon Skull PSA 10 over a brand new card. I'm not going to speak for you as a collector, but personally, I definitely would prefer those cards over this card in the long term. I definitely do want the Magia. Obviously, you've seen that and I've spent a ton of money trying to get it. But cards like Gate Guardian, Summon Skull, if I had to pick cards that I more nostalgic for and would more be more likely to keep is definitely those cards, which I say that and me personally, it's hard to say I'm more nostalgic because I'm going to be nostalgic for the stupid Magia after all we've been through. If I ever pull it, it's going to be a huge it's like the Stardust for me, except this one is a actual new card. So it's not just a reprint that makes it pretty cool. But if you're just somebody who buys the card, it's like if I buy a card, I'm much more likely to sell it than if I pull it. And you guys are probably the same way. You just have this connection with pulling it. You're like, that moment was amazing. Versus like, I bought the card one time. You know, I can move it. It's like, whatever, I bought the card. Okay, I think this is the last one we're gonna hit because I've gone on a little bit long here. Let me know if you like the long discussion videos. I think Magia just warrants it with how much people have talked about it. I know I, I sound negative when I talk about the Magia. I personally think it's a really great card. And I and I'm honestly happy that people are this interested in a new card because with all the reprints and everything, it has been a little bit of a bummer, like trying to collect Yu-Gi-Oh when it comes to like, you know, cards actually holding some value. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know if Magia is going to be the one to do it at $950 or whatever, but I think it is cool that there is something out there that people are interested enough to buy at this crazy price. And that goes into our last point. Rhyme said, there's nothing else to collect in this market. This is literally the only good option. And to that, I totally agree. 
There has been some cool cards to come out recently, but most of them are low rarity. They're uh, easy to pull. The promos, like we're talking 2023, 2024 Mega Tens. The new Blue Eyes 10 reprint, super cool card, collectible, but it's gonna be a $5 card, $10 card. You know, I mean, it's in like one in every 16 tens or something like that. The Stardust from last year in the 2023 10, the Exodia, the DMG alt arts that were in uh, the 2022 Mega Tens, the Blue Eyes with the alternate arts, easy to pull out of Mega Tens. They're not gonna be super valuable. So those are cool collector pieces at low rarity. There just isn't really anything at the high rarity anymore because everything either gets put at a low rarity at a promo or it gets mega reprints and becomes super cheap. This is something that is sort of our new high rarity collector piece along with the 10K. I'd say the 10K is still there. Though the 10K is down in price, I know people have seen that, but it came out in 2020 at the peak. So it's gonna be down no matter what. Every single Yu-Gi-Oh card is down from that point. It doesn't matter that's going to be down. It's still a really expensive card. It's still a really cool collector piece for a new card. But I think Magia is also a new card that is somewhat of a collector piece. Now, it's probably not going to hold up at this price. It might. It could. I could be wrong. I mean, it, it might go up 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. Here's why I don't think that'll happen. The Yu-Gi-Oh market is really, really small. People that think it's going to go up to some crazy price are probably Pokemon people. They, they've seen Pokemon go insane. General rule of thumb, this is what I've noticed. Take a Pokemon price, something similar in Yu-Gi-Oh is 10 times less. Divide the Pokemon price by 10. That's usually the case. Charizard, $200,000 PSA 10 base set, 250,000, whatever. Divide that by 10, you get the glossy blue eyes PSA 10, 25,000, about right. Uh, Base set, whatever, 200,000 box. Divide that by 10, you get 20,000. That's probably a little high for, for LOB first set. It's probably 15, but you see what I mean? Like the top stuff is usually 10 times more in Pokemon than it is in Yu-Gi-Oh. Our market is much smaller. So like a new Charizard or the Umbreon, Moonbreon going for 10,000 in a black label or whatever. Ours are not gonna do that. We're not gonna be that kind of crazy with a new card. Even an old card, like the expensive cards are three to 5,000 now in PSA 10. That's like besides the blue eyes and like a few select other prize cards. Most stuff's like a few thousand. That's the most we're gonna get in Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's why I can't see a brand new card that just came out that still has boxes to be opened going up to crazy thousands of pri dollar price. Like this is probably like the peak. I mean, a thousand dollars, maybe 1500 if people get crazy. By the way, keep in mind, this is not a selling price. This is the current market price to buy it. You know, like the selling price is 600 something. So that's, I mean, that's a crazy price for a QCR. It's the highest QCR available right now ever made. It's the most expensive QCR. So we're in our uncharted territory for price already. I don't think that it can really get that much higher. So I make this video so that you don't get roped into the FOMO. You don't get roped into the, oh no, I better buy it now, and you waste $1,000 on a card. Waste is a strong word, but if you don't have $1,000 to spend, don't spend it on Magia. I mean, if you are a loaded person, you got a lot of money, you're out there and you're like, look, I got, I got 100K in my bank account. I'm gonna buy the Magia. Go for it, dude. You're good. Like if it goes to 500, who cares? That's nothing to you. Like you've got plenty of money, buy the card, enjoy the card. If you are someone that doesn't have the money for it, just don't don't count on it going up because it's just like buying a stock. You don't know what's gonna happen. It might be like, oh man, it's Apple stock. Apple's great, you know? Scandal comes out, boom, down. That's how it works. So I made all this because Rhyme Style, great friend of mine has a complete opposite opinion of, not complete opposite but several things he, he disagrees with me i thought he made some good points i agree with a lot of his points i think that i have been swayed a little bit with the passion for the magia i think this thing will have a bottom line higher than what i thought bottom line that's kind of the wrong word but a, a lowest uh price than i thought it was i mean i thought it would go under 100 originally it's not gonna go under 100. This card is way too popular. There's way too many people interested, but I don't think this is the price. I think it's gonna go down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see longer discussion videos in the future, let me know. If you wanna see me open more packs for this freaking card, maybe we'll be able to pull it eventually. This has been fun. I'll see you guys next time. And don't forget to subscribe. Shout out to Toe Info Show, Anesto Deanna, America Deutscher, Brandon Chaney, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F. Changelang, and Aldelsa Garcia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.